And you don't believe that anything would have changed over that weekend had the story not come out? No, absolutely not. What the, or, uh, we're just talking... No, nothing, why would anything have changed? No, 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 certainly none of the parties, Bank of England... I mean, uh, subsequently, to be clear, subsequently I have spoken to the Governor of Bank of England, the Chancellor, um, the head of the FSA about these events and about our story... For what it's worth, none of them have accused us of sensationalism or, 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 or changing the course of events. In fact, they've said that they felt our broadcasts were responsible and balanced. And none of them have remotely suggested that if we hadn't done it, the outcome would have been different. Um, and certainly, you know, there's not the faintest suggestion that, you know, somehow some kind of a rescue would have been cooked up because by that stage they tried to do the rescue and failed. So with the benefit of hindsight, you don't think there's anything that you would have changed? I don't think there's anything I would have changed. I mean, to be... I mean, there are two things, I think, to, to uh, focus on. Which I do think are the two big things. One is, it was not... It, the retail run was... Extraordinary. Those queues of people trying to get their money out was amazing to see. Nothing like this had happened in this country for decades. Probably in that kind of way, probably not since the 19th century. Right? So it was an extraordinary story. But that, that, that run was responsible over that weekend for something like two or three billion pounds being taken out of the bank. That was not what killed Northern Rock. It was the big institutions, the big money, the big money management firms from all over the world taking their money out, uh, which they would have done anyway, uh, which killed Northern Rock. Now, <coughs> the other thing which I think is also relevant is, even if you think that the retail run, which of course it was, was a bad thing. Of course, you know no, 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 no one wants to see a run on any bank. These are sort of shocking things to see. But the reason there was a run, and there's been a lot of research done into this, was not that people saw our broadcasts and thought, crikey, this is a bus bank, we've got to get our money out. YouGov did a, did a poll of people who went to the bank the next day. And what it discovered was they saw our broadcast or broadcasts on the Thursday night. They then read the, the, the newspapers on the Friday morning and they thought, this looks a bit worrying. I want to know some more. So they went on the website. Northern Rock had far too little server capacity. When a load of people went on the website, it kept collapsing. That made people very anxious. So they thought, OK, I can't get information off the website. I'll go to the branch. Northern Rock prided itself on having very low costs. It reduced the number of its branches. It had 56 branches for something like 1.3 million savers. 20-something thousand customers per branch. When 20,000 something, when 20,000 odd customers want information and they go to a branch, guess what? There's a queue. And what happened was, loads of people went for information, there was a queue, and that made people anxious because they couldn't actually get any information because they couldn't get to the front of that queue. And then finally, and I think this is... If, if I'm going to be critical of Northern Rock's management of this, and I think possibly also critical of the authorities, the information they put out on the Friday was lamentable. Northern Rock put out a statement to the city which began with some stuff about how trading was OK, and right at the end was some very sort of technical stuff about how they'd gone to the Bank of England for help, which was gobbledygook for most savers. You know, it made sense in the city, it made no sense to most savers. So people felt they weren't being put in the picture. Is it surprising in those circumstances that they asked for their money back? I mean, you know, it was, as the Government of the Bank of England said to me weeks later, if you've got a choice between putting your, keeping your money in a bank where there's a question mark over it, and putting it in a bank where there's no question mark, of course you're going to take your money out, particularly since people did know that the deposit insurance scheme in this country does not provide 100% protection. At that stage, it was 90% of your money up to about £30,000. It was not rational for people, when there's, when there's some doubt, to keep their money in the bank.